Good morning. Welcome to Worcester Speaks Out. My name is Matt Taylor, and this morning I have two very special guests in the studio with me from Veterans Inc. in Worcester, who does amazing stuff with our heroes. I'd like to welcome Erin Stelmack and Amanda Rick Heron. Ladies, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So, Veterans Inc. Yes. Great organization. It is. A lot of stuff happening. Yes. Help out a lot of people. Help out our heroes. And they are our heroes. They are, without them, we don't survive. And I firmly believe that. Mm -hmm. So before we even start, I have to say thank you to both of you for what you do. Because without you, our heroes would be worse off than they are already. And some of them are very worse off. And you two know that all too well. So before we start, can you just tell me a little bit about yourselves and what you do at Veterans Inc.? Sure. So Veterans Inc., you know, we've been around for over 25 years. I've been with the company for over 11 years. Wow. Which is, I know. Ah. Time flies. <laughs> and it is by far one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever done in my life. I bet. My father is a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I think that that's probably why I wanted to work for the company. One of the reasons also, too, was because I went to Worcester State, uh, graduate, urban studies, and I wanted to work with a population of people that others may have been afraid to talk to, deal with. And I didn't know anything about Veterans Inc. before going there. I really didn't. I, I saw an ad in the paper uh, for an employment specialist at the time. And I said, you know what, let me go down. Hopefully I'll, I'll get a call back for an interview. And uh, luckily I did. And thankfully they hired me. And it's been one of the most, again, rewarding experiences I've ever had in my life. I'm, I'm sure 11 years later, you're still there. I am. Oh, absolutely. So before we go any further, you're a Worcester State What's so am I. Thank you. All right. I'm a Lancer too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Erin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm new to the company. I started there on December 7th. I am an events coordinator and I handle the communications uh, coordination as well. And it's really an honor to be a part of such an amazing organization. I am especially proud of my brother who is um, a Marine. So mm -hmm. I really have a military connection there as well as the granddaughter of two um, World War II veterans. Mm -hmm. So it's really an honor to work there. And every day when I come to work, I walk past many of the men that I know my efforts go to help. Right. So it's, it's very inspiring every single day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking before, before we started and, uh, I'm also a child of military family and especially the World War II generation because there's not many of them left. They're up there now. They're, they're in their 90s, I would, I would assume. All of them. They would have to be, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, and even Korean. Yeah. You know, the the Korean, Korean War. You know, I'm also, I also sit on the board of directors for the Korean War Memorial. Oh, do you really? I do. And uh, and you, you really want to make sure that... Um, Whoever is left from each war is getting what they deserve. Sure. And I think people forget that. They, Absolutely. they just think of the current uh, veterans in our active military right now. Right. But the reality is, just like my father, who is a Vietnam veteran, right. there are still needs for each of the war um, experiences that they sure. all went through. Well, yeah, even, even the Vietnam veterans. My, my parents are Vietnam veterans, and they're in their late 60s now. That makes me old, actually. I'm mm -hmm. getting old. Wait a minute, I'm in the same breath yeah, then. This so. is not, we should move, move along. <laughs> move forward. <laughs> move forward. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, it, I have such respect for these guys and what they've done. And you're seeing it all over the country, especially uh, nowadays with what's happening with the VA hospitals. And uh, I just, I shouldn't say caring, lack of caring, what, what's going on there. But what you guys do is a little bit different. You 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 offer so many different services. Yes, we yeah. do. And I think that's what we want to educate everyone on today because when we started out over 25 years ago down on Grove Street in Worcester, it was a very different program. Right. We've evolved. We've changed. Uh -huh. We are all across New England with our programming. Oh, is it really? We are. We also receive calls from all across the US. Huh. So we have a 24 seven hotline where a veteran can call at any time and uh, get a live person on the phone to try to help them. And the reality is 
we started here. So we are Worcester Local First. Mm -hmm. And it was just about um, getting them off the streets. Uh, you know, our, our, our president, if he was here today, would say, you know, he really had an issue seeing a veteran homeless on the street that that didn't connect and that didn't sit right with him yeah it's very sad and uh you know now again 25 years later we are are providing not just housing but there are other tools if right. you want to say in that toolbox um which is anything that they come in with i feel like we are one-stop shopping right. for that veteran to come in um with their family members and and get that that support mm -hmm. and if you are a veteran and you are listening Listening today, and you do need, you are in need of any type of services. You're not alone and you're not forgotten. Call this number 1 800 482 2565. 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day, there's someone there for you. Or you can. Can they go down, go right down to Veterans Inc. on Grove Street? Absolutely. We would never turn anyone away that, that wanted just to come into our facility and um, needed some type of support or needed a service. Um, we're there to, to, to talk to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Great. Um, we're we're going to get into some other stuff a little bit later, but for right now, we do have some events coming up, and that's where you come in, Erin. Yes. Tell our listeners and tell me about the Stand Down event. Okay. Well, Stand Down is a very important event to us. It is our 12th annual Stand Down event, which will take place on June 16th at our Worcester headquarters. We're expecting at least 500 veterans who may be homeless or in need and their family members to come to our event. And at Stand Down, they will, um, it's all about them. It's tailored for to them to meet their needs from nine to four. When they arrive, um, after they've, been checked in, they are welcome to take advantage of a multitude of services that are there for them. There will be uh, health care providers. If they, have, if they have a need to get some help for substance abuse issues, there's someone there for that. Um, legal help, financial help, help with housing issues, and, and more. There's lots more for them. Um, they'll also receive free new clothing. They'll be fed that day. We've got some great food vendors coming. Uh, and we're proud to say there's an area dedicated just to female veterans as well. Really? So it's quite it's quite an event. It's very moving. It's it's sad that in this day we still have the need to help veterans this, in this way, but this is what Veterans Inc. is there for. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Our veterans are not better taken care of, automatically taken care of. But we are there for them. Right. Absolutely. So the, so the event is coming up on uh, Friday, June 16th, and it's going to be at Veterans Inc. at 69 Grove Street in Worcester. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know Worcester at all, uh, Grove Street is it's very easy to get to. It's right off 290. Um, best way to get there, probably get off at the Belmont Street exit off 290, and fall, you can follow the signs uh, to, towards the Worcester Art Museum, and then you'll see it. You'll see it. It almost looks like a castle. Oh, it does. Yeah. It's yeah. A it's big, a century uh, old. Yeah. Uh, is it really? Um, yes. It's. It was, I believe, erected in 1896, wow. around there. Yeah. And uh, that's the front of the building um, is on Salisbury Street. And then we have our housing program, which is on the back end on the Grove Street side. Yeah. T uh, talk a little bit about the housing program. Sure. So one of the, um, I would say with our housing program, one of the things that uh, a lot of the public is not aware about is that Grove Street is not just the only housing program that we have in Worcester. And and this is very important. So Worcester's Grove Street site can house up to um, 91 male veterans. Is that time. emergency or is that residential? There are 85 um, beds on our third floor, which um, are more of a permanent, you know, transitional time. Right, right. And then we have six emergency so, on, on the bottom floor. So if somebody comes in, I, I have no place to go, uh, can you help me? Correct. So if you're full up mm -hmm. and a vet, say five veterans walk in, it's 10 degrees out. Right. What do you do in that situation? No, that's a good question. So because we have other sites, um, if there was another opening at another site, obviously we're going to, in the interim, if, you know, put them at another site. So you, you do find them a place. Correct. Correct. Okay. We would never, ever say, well, 
you know, so sorry, right, sorry. We're, we're, right. we're, we're all booked up. We're, yeah, and we're we closing in 10 minutes. We sorry. can't accommodate. Yeah. That has never been our motto. Right. We would never, um, you know, our motto right now is they were there when we needed us. Right. And we must be there now that. We have to be. Yeah. So. Absolutely have to be. We, um, we would make sure we would accommodate them. Uh, we have other sites um, that are on, on Cambridge Canterbury Street area of Worcester. We have a women and children site, mm-hmm. which was one, uh, one of the first in the nation to open up yeah. uh, and that is very important and it's actually a a, a need more now than yeah. we've ever seen because I think you know the public just assume again male veterans okay right. but there is a female veteran component as Erin just mentioned in our stand down uh-huh. and that's why we have a separate room right for them to yeah. feel comfortable, mm-hmm. to feel that their needs are being taken care of. And um, if they're bringing a child, sure. that the child feels comfortable in this you know, group, in this event. And, and that's why we have the opportunity to have them house. Right. The other day I was uh, speaking with one of the heads of the Central Mass Housing Alliance. And we were talking about the, the same type of uh, situations that we're talking about now, whereas you see a lot of, a lot of people who come in who are, who are veterans or are, are homeless in general, and they have families. And what do you do with, you know, you have a mother who comes in who's a veteran and she's got three kids. You have to accommodate that. If someone did come in and the, you had to place them someplace else. Do you provide transportation, all of all of their yes. accoutrements and all that stuff? Absolutely. Okay. If someone came to us and for some reason we, we couldn't accommodate them for whatever reason it was, uh, that's where we have our network. Um, right. We take pride, I would say, in, in our collaboration with community members, community supporters, because we know that there are other people out there that do have other um, housing programs that may not be specific to the veteran population, right. but are helping family members that are helping, uh, you know, females only. It, it, you know, so you have to do that. You have to be willing to work with your community members to say, okay, we have someone at our doorstep and maybe we, um, as an agency, it, They come in, maybe they're not even a veteran. Right. And we need to figure it out and uh, go from there and talk to our community providers. Right, right. I want to read you something real quick. It's the Third Amendment. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house with the consent of the owner nor in time of war, but a manner prescribed by law. Now, to me, that means I, I would have no problem taking in somebody who is a veteran, who is somebody who served this country to my own private home. Do you do things like that? Do you call on volunteers to say, we have no place for this gentleman or this lady to go? They're a veteran. Can we quarter them in your home? Well, what I would say to that is we've actually never encountered that because we've been able to provide oh, that's the great. support. That's so, th- that's great to hear. And and I think I, ha- I have to say it's really because of our leadership. Right. So, you know, our, our president and CEO, um, retired Lieutenant Colonel Vincent Peroni, mm-hmm. And our executive director, Dennis Leary, uh, they have grown the organization to a level where we have enough beds Excellent. currently to accommodate, um, you know, the population that we have. And and that's why, again, the public needs to understand that when you just see Grove Street, that's not the only location that we're housing our veterans at. Right. And it's not just Worcester that we're housing our veterans. Yeah. We're housing them in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Devons. Right. So Old Fort Devons, we have we can accommodate up to 36 veterans. Really? Yes. At, at Devons? Yes. Wow. That's amazing. So, Erin, we have besides Stand Down, there are some other events coming up. Yes. Throughout the whole year, there's always events going on. Exactly. So, yes. and people can get involved with this. This isn't just employees only. All kinds of ways to get involved. Right now, just around the corner, just about a month away, on May 10th, we have our 20th annual golf tournament mm-hmm. out at the Heritage Country Club in Charlton. Good course. Very excited yeah. about that. Uh-huh. If anyone is interested in sponsoring our event, we have whole sponsorships available. If anyone wants a corporate package, we're happy to talk to them about it. If they want to donate a raffle item, we'd be delighted and Love thankful raffles. to have that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. So that's there's lots of ways to get involved in that. And throughout the year, we have events. Um, I know it's a ways away, and we're just getting into spring and summer, so people won't want to think about it quite yet. But in the fall, 
Sure. Um, people could mark their calendars. November 4th, we have a 5K coming up. Oh. And November 4th being significant, being um, when we celebrate Veterans Day. Of course, yeah. So this will kick off our Veterans Day events. Yep. And we have um, events in November, including a pancake breakfast mm -hmm. and a parade. And we're working on some other things. And later in the year, we have a... Um, I'm sure you do a Christmas time. Uh, we do a holiday of harvest. Yeah. So all kinds of yeah. things. And there's a few other things in the works. So you have to stay tuned for that as right, well. Right. But you had mentioned people getting involved. Um, people do some uh, want to. They ask us often how they can volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, I did mention being a sponsor for events. But if people want to do hands-on events, um, they can check our website for when we have sessions um, mm -hmm. to do information sessions on that. We just did one the other day. So people who volunteer... Mm -hmm. uh, to me, a volunteer isn't someone who just comes and, hey, I'm I'm here to uh, you know pick up the trash or I'm here to you know serve food or whatnot. A volunteer to me is somebody who comes who gets really involved and comes in and has a conversation with somebody who is a Korean War veteran, not just about military stuff, but about anything in their life. Can people do that too? We have opportunities for people to come in and they, um, t it would take the form of like a tutoring. Sure. Um, all kinds of different ways. There's, um, people can, can do as you were speaking of, but they can also do um, help by driving. We need drivers to get the veterans to appointments that they need. And right. it's, um, that's very rewarding as well. Yeah. Yeah, so all absolutely. kinds of ways, yes. So, so all sorts of things, right? Absolutely. And of course, you do take donations. We do. Uh, we're very I, grateful. I we... take them too, <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'm so sorry. We, we, um, we had mentioned donations and sponsorships. We're very grateful. We have a lot of support from our community mm -hmm. um, in the form of donations, financial donations, item product donations. Um uh, should say a thank you to some of our sponsors for our upcoming events. Sure. Uh, we have TJX companies that just mm -hmm. signed on. They're a major sponsor. Um, and there are some others as well. Sure. So we'd like to keep adding to that list and hopefully some listeners may right. want to get on to that. Absolutely. So, so if you do want to come on and, 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 if you do want to uh, be a sponsor, how would they get a hold of you? They can easily just go through our web, email us through our website. Yep. Um, they can, which is uh, the, the website is veteransinc.org. Okay. They can also go to events at veteransinc.org and email us directly. Mm -hmm. um, or they can give us a call. Sure. And uh, the 800 number is 800-482-2565. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And there was a lot of sponsors. Yes. So I, I, instead of leaving somebody out, I'm just not going to read them all. Right. But, right. I, but I am going to just uh, briefly touch on some of the big ones. Yes, please. National Grid. Uh, TJX, like you mentioned, um, one of one of the big ones was uh, Spencer Bank and Reliant Medical. Another big one, Reliant Medical. They're uh, they are they're very uh, supportive of us, and you know we have to give another shout out to to the Home Depot. Oh yeah, because they are by far one of our uh, corporate sponsors, foundation supporters, you name it. Mm -hmm. They will come in and do volunteerism till there's no end. Yeah, um, and you really. I, I would really love to see more companies say that they will stand behind our military right. and stand behind our veterans and and do that support in, in, in any capacity. Right. And it's not just about the monetary support, as Aaron was just mentioning. Yeah. It really is about connecting with with that veteran coming in and seeing them and even with our um, hot meals and our food services program you can see that the connection that the veteran makes when they see community members coming in and serving them food or mm -hmm. handing them a box of food for our food pantry they now realize they're not alone right and that's key because a lot of them walk in our door and they feel alone Right. And they're not. And they're not. And they're they've not and somehow someone has made them think that. Right. And I, I would hate I would hate to feel that way. So why would I want someone that put their life on the line yeah. to defend our country want to feel that way? Right. And that that's I want to switch gears a little bit. That was it's a great leading point to what my next question was. This especially nowadays, we're seeing a lot of anti American garbage from it's its own citizens. Uh, to be honest with you, it makes me sick to my stomach. And how can you not back these guys 
who put their lives on the line for you. I, I, I don't understand. I can't fathom it. I don't really have any words to explain it. It just makes me, it just infuriates me. Um, so if you are a veteran and you do need help, remember you are not alone and you are not forgotten because I have two wonderful, beautiful ladies sitting in front of me who are ready to help you at any time you need. And I want to give that number out again. 1-800-482-2565. 1-800-482-2565. Two five six five. If you do need help, if you feel abandoned, you're not. Call Veterans Inc. today, twenty four hours a day. Before we go, we only we only have a few minutes left. It goes by fast. This did. Yeah, I'm it go, impressed. It goes by. It goes right. Yeah, it go, We can go on for hours. Um, we could. <laughs> but there, but there is there is a, a subject that it's on everyone's minds, and that is the opioid crisis. And I am sure, because I know when my cousin came back home from Iraq and he was addicted to OxyContin because it was the only way he could stop the bombs from falling in his head. Mm. How bad, how how much are you seeing it right now? Well, I'm glad you went this way with your next question because one of the new programs that I didn't mention earlier in the program is our new um, alcohol and drug treatment program that is located in Shrewsbury. And the reason why our leadership decided to incorporate that this year is because of all the issues we are seeing and the need that is out there sure. to have these beds. So we are a level three program, which is if you are coming out of the top level four right. out of um, detoxification, Detox. yep. uh, you would come into our program for two weeks. And the great thing about this is that, for example... If we have a veteran that is currently in one of our housing programs and we run dry locations, mm -hmm. so we do breathalyzers and we sure. check everything, say they blow numbers. Yep. Now we can say if it's appropriate for that particular veteran, you can go now over to our shoes break program, work directly with staff that understand sure. the military and our veterans, and now you're going to have more of a of a of a connection mm -hmm. to your recovery, and this is huge. Yeah. So we are very unique in this type of program, uh, from what I've been told. Mm -hmm. And right now, we um, I believe have up to 32 beds. Um, right now, we are um, leading up to to making sure we've got all of them full. Yeah. Uh, but the word literally was like a soft opening yeah. in that sense. Yep. And we are full. Yeah. I, and so well, you can sure see you the are. need is here for Central oh, yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. And we're ready for it. There's over 60,000 addicts in Central Massachusetts uh, alone. Uh, 32 beds may not sound like a lot, but it, it, it's, believe it or not, it's uh, not small. It's, uh, some of the regular rehab facilities, it's not like you would see a thousand mm -hmm. beds. You're never right. going to see that, you know? Right. Um, we work very closely with Spectrum Health mm -hmm. Systems, um, and one of the one of their I don't know what her title is, but she does a show here at our WTAG WSRS studios, and she did a whole show on the military and addiction. It was unbelievably fascinating to see what uh, how to hear some of the stories of what these guys have gone through. And I asked um, another, not a, a, a relative, but a friend of mine's uh, father who was in the Vietnam War. And he said it was amazing they were seeing all the, the troops coming home who were addicted to heroin because it was so plentiful and so cheap over there. But they had no help at all. Right. Nowadays, we do because we've learned from the mistakes. Not, I don't want to say mistakes. We've learned from our past. Right. And we're seeing now that these – you do have help. If you're a veteran and you're addicted to whatever substance, you do have help. You do have help. So call call today. Just get in touch with us. Somewhere. Get in touch with these two lovely women today because they will help you. So thirty two beds. Yes, that's uh, that's that that's pretty good. And you know it's it's it, it's good to have, like you said, that you know to have the beds first of all. But the great I think part of the program is the space that we we're going to be providing them right. and the resources. Um, the the land that the program is on is over 22 acres. Wow. S Serenity. Yeah. Really. So you want to kind of go into this mode of recovery and not hear, you know, beeping and noises and yeah. all this like craziness around you. And 
you're on a serene piece of land sure. where you can now um, meditate mm -hmm. and do yoga and so, so health and like that wellness. Are, right. Yes, it's and work awful. out. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you get that other side, which in any type of recovery, in my opinion, is you need the health and wellness component. Absolutely. You can't just go in there and, and you know, textbook everything out no, you, you need to have that that other side is it run by uh, so the counselors are they veterans as well too uh, you mean on the um on, it, like on staff uh you know that's a good question so most of our staff we we love hiring anyone that's been in the military currently in the military so i would say about half or just over half of our staff is mm -hmm. is that and then you've got the other half that's aaron and i Right. You know that that right. have have had or have military members in our family, and we are just so passionate for the cause right. that that's why we're here today. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, besides all of the events that are coming up, what are some of the things that you would like to see happen at Veterans Inc. That I would personally like to see yeah, happen. So things with... that 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 would that would fall under your expertise. Oh, that's a great question. Right. Well, I would like to someday say that there's not a need for veterans inc that right. would be my main goal yeah um but really i would like to see just so much more support from the community sure and people to be more open-minded about things and and just i would just i would like to see people to continue to support us and really get to know us and and right. that's that's my goal that's yeah. what my goal is going to be for my events and my communications the goal is basically my... to shut yourself down exactly exactly yep. it is so, so we don't have to mm -hmm. have play. I mean, for what you guys do, it's great, but right. we shouldn't have to have a place. Exactly. Like Agreed. This, you know, because yeah. in, in my opinion, our veterans should be open, open arms. Agreed. And it's sad, it's sad to see how, how some of them are treated, how some of them are thought of. It infuriates me. But we do live in a free society, and this is the, this is the cost of freedom. So yes. any final thoughts? I, You know, I just, I really, again, I think just really want to hit home to everyone that's listening that we're here today to just really educate the public about what we do and to not be afraid of connecting with us. We've been around, again, over 25 years and there are still people that live in Worcester that don't know who we are and what we do. Right. Drive by the building every day and then finally we'll say, oh, you know, our headquarters is on Grove Street in Worcester. Oh, oh, I've always wondered what that building was. Right. You know, it's like we want people to know who we are and we're very frugal, I should say, because some people will say to me, well, why are you not out there more in, in, in maybe a marketing way? And, you know, we're frugal. We, we take pride in saying that as of today, 90 percent gets funneled back into the programming. So you donate a dollar, 90 cents is going back into the program. Ten cents is going into the administrative. Right. And we really take pride in that. And that's why, you know, we, we do a lot of grassroots mm -hmm. still 25 years later. But we want everyone to you know, not be afraid of coming down. And when you hear. I think the word shelter or housing program, sure. you already have something in your head. Yeah, this, and yeah. You need to walk through our door. Right. That's all I'm going to say. Coming up on Friday, June 16th, there is the standout event. And like we talked about before, if you would like to get involved with Veterans Inc., please give them a call. You can always just check the website out. It's, it's veteransinc.org. Yes. Yeah, not .com because I do that all the time. Dot I, .org. Yeah, everything <laughs> is dot, dot, dot .com with me. I still write 07 for the date, too. <laughs> But <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, I really appreciate you guys coming down. Thank you for having me. I really me. appreciate Thank you. What you do is so important. And it's so, it's exhilarating to someone who, who is a civilian to see uh, two people who are so strong-willed, so intelligent, and so empathic be working with the people who have defended us and keep us safe. So I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank both of you. Well, thank you. Thank right. you. This has been Worcester Speaks Out. My name is Matt Taylor. Remember, when things heat up, Worcester stays cool. Have a good day.